The pros and cons of leasing the JAS 39C D Gripen aircraft for the Philippines, please like and share the video, and subscribe to the channel, and the flurry of activities related to the possible acquisition of the JAS 39 Gripen aircraft by the Philippines continues as Sweden's ambassador to the Philippines recently visited the Department of National Defense. The ambassador had previously visited the Philippine Air Force, and the manufacturer of the Gripen itself, the Saab Group had also visited the Air Force before that. And this time the Swedish ambassador, and the Defense Department didn't leave much room for speculation anymore as they publicly announced that they were indeed discussing the Philippines' possible acquisition of the Gripen. President Bongbong Marcos himself also reportedly held a closed-door meeting with the Prime Minister of Sweden during the European summit last month of December 2022. For me, though, these many activities only served to strengthen the theory that Sweden had indeed denied the sale of their Gripen aircraft to the former administration of Rodrigo Duterte as they were never seen to be this active about the aircraft during his term in office. Anyway, the Bulgarian military website recently cited anonymous sources saying that the main topic discussed between President Marcos and the Swedish Prime Minister was the possible leasing of the Gripen fighter aircraft to the Philippines, and that they would already be fully armed when transferred. This information is of course unconfirmed, but I think it may be true because leasing the aircraft would address the issue of how they will be maintained. Remember that the Air Force was criticized recently when the public was made aware of how they had problems maintaining and keeping their FA-50 PH Fighting Eagle aircraft flying. Leasing the gripe ends like what the countries of Hungary and the Czech Republic did as I understand it means that the Swedes will be the ones to maintain the aircraft and provide training, so our Air Force won't have to worry about maintaining it and just go over and fly them. But there are disadvantages as well. Like we won't be able to fly the Gripens as much as we want to because Sweden will impose a maximum number of flight hours per year for the leased aircraft. Hungary for example, reportedly only is allowed up to 2,000 flight hours per year for the 14 Gripens they leased, which comes to an average of 143 flight hours per year for each Gripen airframe. The Czech Republic on the other hand is supposed to only fly 2,200 flight hours per year for the 14 Gripen aircraft they leased which averages around 157 flight hours per year for each of their Gripens. The leasing of the aircraft will also in the long run cost more than buying them outright, although the initial cost required will be somewhat affordable. For example, Hungary is said to spend 138.7 million United States dollars per year for the lease of its 14 aircraft, so for 10 years that will be $1.39 billion for 14 aircraft, which is around $99 million already per aircraft. That is around the same price already for when Thailand bought their 12 Gripens, but the leased aircraft can be used only for 10 years while the Thais can use theirs for as long as they want. But then again, that leased price does include the almost worry-free maintenance of the aircraft already. If we extend the lease by another 10 years, then we will have to pay another billion dollars plus to continue using the aircraft. Not sure if the fuel is already included in the lease. But I think it and the ammunition and missiles of the Gripens we will have to pay on our own, I think those are separate costs from the lease itself. Also when we lease the aircraft, they will not likely give us brand new airframes but used ones from the Swedish Air Force just like they did with Hungary. But pulling aircraft out of their Air Force also means even faster availability than the two years Sweden was guaranteeing if we buy brand new Gripens. But I do have some questions about the lease, like what happens if a Gripen crashes while it is being used by our Air Force? Do we pay for it outright, or will it be considered first if it's due to pilot error? Or a design or manufacturing defect of the aircraft before deciding who will be charged? Also I am sure these Gripens will be used for our defense only. But what if we want to attack the missile launchers or strategic targets of a country that is attacking us? That will be on offense already, not defense anymore, so will Sweden allow that? And what happens when we go to war when a lot more flight hours for the aircraft will be needed, how will the lease agreement handle that? Anyway. One good thing about the lease is that if we are looking to get a better aircraft than the Gripen in 10 years time, then that will fit perfectly with that plan as a number of new and better aircraft will be available for us to choose from in the 2030s, like South Korea's KF-21 Boramay fighter aircraft for example or maybe even Turkey's Bayraktar Kizilelma combat drone. So, to summarize, leasing the Gripen will result in them being more expensive for us in the long run, 
but will at least guarantee the maintenance of the aircraft for 10 years. I also have questions on what limitations Sweden might put on these leased aircraft, like will they allow their offensive use during times of war? But whether we lease or buy the Gripen or any other aircraft out there, I hope we will finally sign a contract for them soon. Thank you for watching the video, I invite you again to like and share it, and subscribe to the channel.